the uh, chain and the coffee business, right? Uh, so I'm going to start in this agriculture system. Now I've taken what I've done here is I've expanded the scope and made it. Uh, in a, just started. I'm going to talk about agriculture as well in general and of course you know what is applicable to agriculture get well applied to coffee but you look at the indian agriculture right i mean uh, close to 58 percent of the households depend on the agriculture and it contributes close to 17 percent of the gdp which is quite considerable uh one more important aspect here is 30 percent of the crop inputs that you know are used by farmers grow are actually not genuine right uh, besides that, there's a major problem of farmers not getting compensated well. They are, you know, uh, always in a debt, and you know, average debt uh, per household is close to 1.404 lakh. And of course, that does translate to a lot of um, farmers' suicides and all this stuff. So, in terms of the the scope and the problem, if you look at it, it's quite vast. You know, there's a lot of impact that technology can have. There's a lot of impact that you know. Uh, can, which can drive and actually improve these numbers to a considerable aspect, right? And if we talk about the supply chain in general, right, if you look at, there's so much of inefficiency in the supply chain. I'm, again, this is a generic example, but I'm sure it's the same in coffee as well, right? So if you start from the grower and, and it goes, uh, it exchanges so many hands, right? You have you have your processors, you have your middlemen, you have your uh, mundies, et cetera, and your retailers. So, you know, it actually has so many hands that the, by the time it reaches the consumer, the prices have been jacked up quite considerably. But the biggest problem is a lot of that benefit doesn't even go back to the farmer, right? So what you see is there's farmer distress at the same time, there is uh, inflation in the prices. And if you, if you see coffee, I'm sure uh, coffee also follows a similar process, right? Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of modernization that has happened in a lot of other industries. But if you look at agriculture or coffee, uh, we are yet to see that. And, you know, that's what we are seeing from you know, CCRI and uh, Coffee Board of India, putting in a lot of effort in ensuring that the coffee trade can be modernized. A lot of that benefits can be now uh, availed and made available to uh, the coffee growers or the coffee supply chain itself, right? And we've seen... In, if you look at technology, it's helped, helped revolutionize a lot of other industries. It's brought in a lot of efficiencies. It's made uh, the providers, right? Who was the actual providers? Uh, it's helped them grow uh, to a great extent, right? So that's what, you know, something which we need to get to. And what are the various uh, technologies that are available? If you look at from the uh, agriculture or the coffee perspective, right? You're seeing a lot of... Uh, Startups, a lot of companies doing doing a lot of these things, which can eventually help uh, any grower in ensuring that you know uh, one he uh, there's productivity, there's efficiency. Secondly, there's less wastage. Thirdly, of course, you know uh, payments are on time. Uh, uh, ensuring that they have access to data, ensuring that a lot of the process is automated. At the end of the day, anything that has to be done has to benefit the grower, right? So you see a lot of companies, a lot of technology in the space of drone satellites where people are able to actually analyze the crop images and help you weed out the bad crops, right? You're seeing uh, uh, technologies in the IoT space, which basically uh, is nothing but, you know, smart devices, smart devices which are connected to internet, which can actually help you uh, gather data from your farm and, you know, uh, help you uh, analyze that data and make sense out of it and indirectly uh, or rather directly get uh, that benefit back to your farm, right? Be, for example, get weather data, soil data. So a lot of that is happening. Uh, a lot of, uh, we're seeing a lot of advancement, a lot of technology in this space. Um, another important aspect is, of course, your data itself, right? You know, access to data, which we didn't see till now. I mean, if you look at a lot of farmers in India, a lot of growers, uh, we see them not using data as much as what we would like them to use, right? For example, being able to consider the soil data, being able to consider the weather data, be able to consider uh, the region data, right? So be able, and take that into account and figure out what is the right time to grow something and also be able to understand, you know, how to manage the crops, right? We see a lot of farmers, uh, a lot of growers actually not aware of that, right? So be, so data is, uh, we've seen what we started in India also, which are actually helping out in this aspect, uh, providing a way for farmers to be able to make sense of the data from the farm and be able to grow uh, efficiently, right? Uh, we're also seeing a lot of automation in the space where, you know, we have auto pickers, et cetera. 
Uh, before I talk about blockchain, I also, I mean, of course, a lot of you might already be aware that it's uh, technology available available now for soil and weather analysis, real-time soil and weather analysis, which can take your soil, soil samples, be able to give you exactly uh, what's the right uh, crop to grow, what's the right uh, coffee type to grow, etc. right? And amidst all this is, of course, uh, having access to data in your hand, right, to your mobile. So uh, a lot of this is actually going to be available uh, in your hands. So coming back to blockchain, right? We also see another important blockchain is also another important technology, which helps uh, modernize the agriculture trade. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about blockchain in detail in the next few slides. Uh, so so let's understand before I go to blockchain. Let's let's understand what is the problem with the current supply chain, right? I mean, talk about coffee in particular. Uh, it's very unstructured, if I if I'm not wrong, right? It's quite unstructured, where you know, uh, there's and also there's a lot of, lot of lack of trust between the various entities, between a curing unit or a grower or a retailer, right? The amount of trust is not as much as one would like it to be. Plus, you know, hence the government has to play a middleman. There are there are other people who have to play middlemen and actually drive that, and this only increases efficiency, sorry, inefficiency, right? So, and if you add to that, there's lack of transparency in transactions. Right? For example, if I were to buy coffee today, uh, coffee being a commodity, uh, you know, my price, uh, uh, which is as per today, uh, a lot of time that doesn't get uh, calculated, right? That doesn't get accounted. So a lot of times, you know, when a, when a farmer is selling a coffee, selling his coffee, uh, it does lead to a lot of these confusion, a lot of these issues, and there's scope of lack of transparency in the transaction. But, and one uh, another major aspect is now coffee uh, being a GI crop, right? A GI uh, has got a GI tank. You might see a lot of pilferage happening, and you might see a lot of fraud happening where coffee actually not belonging to this region being sold as Arabica coffee from Chikmagalur or something like that, right? Um, and imagine when once a consumer gets a pack of coffee in his or her hands. Uh, the lack of confidence uh, is there, right? There's no confidence in actually whether uh, the coffee that he has in his or her hands belongs to Chikmangur or not. So there's no way for a consumer to verify the origin, the trace, and be able to confidently, sorry. Hello? Yeah, and be able to confidently buy uh, the, the product that, you know, uh, she or he wants to buy, right? Uh, plus, uh, payments to farmers, settlements to farmers is always a big issue and always a big concern. There's always delayed. Uh, sometimes even settlements won't happen. Uh, and add to that, you know, the pain of quality evaluation, which is a factor in uh, payments, right? So quality evaluation is painstaking, it's slow. And there's no transparency again in quality evaluation. If a farmer sent a bag of Arabica coffee, right? And how uh, there's no confidence whether the certification that was received was actually for so that bag or wasn't, right? So if you take into account all that, there's very much a lack of transparency, payments are not happening in time, and there's complete trust deficit in the supply chain, right? Now, if you were to export a coffee with which has been procured this way, you can imagine the uh, confidence that the importers of other countries would have in you guys, right? So, I mean, uh, the, the, the confidence is, of course, much less now because they're not sure whether this coffee is properly certified. It actually belongs to the region where it comes from. So there is this lack of confidence, again, in the importers of other countries about when they're trying to import coffee from uh, India, right? Um, so what is needed now to solve this problem is very important. One, uh, like I said, you know, we want to enable uh, data. The data is a, data plays a key role here, you know. Uh, so capturing data about growers, capturing data about the farms, capturing data about transactions become very important. And that's the key to build a uh, network which is transparent, which is trustworthy. Plus, of course, be able to provide a way wherein payments are automated. There's no delay. If a curing unit receives a bag of coffee from a grower A, and if it's of a particular grade, then immediately a payment has to be initiated from the curing unit to the grower, right? Um, and Another important thing is be able to geotag the data so that you know uh, when some when coffee is actually purchased and sold, uh, it can be confidently sold with the knowledge that yes, it can, belongs to Chikmagalur or it belongs to uh, Baba Budangiri or you know BR Hills. So you know that confidence is available and that can be enabled through geotagging of collections, right? Uh, and what also what is very important is which is where blockchain plays a key role is 
uh, data not being centralized to a single entity, right? This data should be available with everyone, and this data should be verifiable. And only then everybody will have confidence in the network, everybody will have confidence in the supply chain. And that is where blockchain plays you know, an important role. Uh, plus, of course, you know, being, be, being able to give access to the certifiers, to the labs, to the coffee board, to be able to certify coffee that flows to the supply chain. That's also need of building a transparent network like this. Um, and a very important aspect of a network is automation, right? If you look at automation, when I talk about automation, I mean, if a transaction has happened, payments have to be automated. If a transaction, uh, uh, if a coffee has been procured, uh, the coffee parameters capturing has to be automated. So a lot of that automation is also very important when it comes to building a transparent, trustable network. And, and among all this, the central piece here is verifiability, right? I should be able to verify any transaction and every transaction on the platform, uh, and I should be able to do it easily. So that's where that's the key here. If I'm not able to verify a transaction, if I'm not able to verify the source of the coffee, if I'm not able to verify the trace of the coffee, it defeats the purpose of you know building a transparent, trustable network. So verifiability of the network or of every transaction is also very important. Hence, any network uh, that is meant to make coffee transactions or agriculture transactions trustable and traceable uh, needs to have a verifiability element. It has to be very simple. It has to be very easy, right? So that is where blockchain plays a key role here. So let's understand a little bit about what blockchain is. I'm sure a lot of you heard of Bitcoin. Uh, and you know, Bitcoin is based on blockchain networks. And some of you might be confused if Bitcoin and blockchain are same or not. So Bitcoin is another just a, uh, a, a uh, currency which is built on the blockchain network. So blockchain is nothing but a distributor ledger technology. So what I mean by distributor? Distributor ledger is where, like I said, right, uh, it's not meant to be at a central place, right? It can be, uh, it is something which is owned by multiple parties. And in case of, a, in case of a blockchain network, it's owned by all the parties. So think of it this way, right? Uh, just to give an example, I'm sure a lot of you use Google Docs, right? So when you share a Google document, uh, a lot of, and if you make it editable to everyone, everyone has access to edit the Google document, right? So it, think of it in a similar way. Um, uh, this is how it is, right? Everybody has access to the network. Uh, everybody can make a change in the network, et cetera. So this is what is blockchain. I hope I was able to uh, explain that to you. Uh, another very important aspect of blockchain is it's immutable. So what is immutability? Immutability means that any transaction that is recorded in the blockchain is not changeable. It cannot be edited. That's where uh, it helps you make the tra network trustable. Because now, if a transaction is not editable, that means nobody can change it. So nobody has authority to change it, unless, of course, there are other ways or the consensus has to be derived. But that is slightly out of the scope. But you know, if you understand this, immutability is where no transaction can be changed. Once a transaction is recorded, uh, it stays on the blockchain. So that makes it trustable, reliable, and something which can fall back to whenever there is any um, any confusion or any trust deficit that happens. Uh, and like I already mentioned, blockchain is a decentralized network. So anybody who is part of the network, be a grower, a curing unit, the coffee board, or the government, or anybody can be part of it and can have a copy of all the data that flows to the uh, uh, copy of the data or the transactions that happen on the platform. Um, and uh, one more important aspect of blockchain is what makes it a blockchain is you know uh, is a concept of cryptography. Cryptography is if you wanted to if you want to understand in simpler terms is nothing but you know uh, adding a lock to uh, 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 data to make it uh difficult to basically it's a it's, it's a way in which the, the data is actually changed so that it becomes difficult to decode it back to what it was so if you've heard of hashing encryption decryption so hashing is what uh is used here so it's a cryptography based hashing is a mathematical uh, uh you know way of actually making your data more secure and that's what happens in uh in that's what even uh, blockchain uses blockchain uses hash to you know, basically trace your old data or trace your or previous blog. Um, and of course, there is a concept of smart contracts, right? The smart contracts is where uh, these are uh, contracts. If you've heard of, it's basically contracts that you write in physical terms, like a, a legal contract, 
but is actually executed in technology so that anytime an event occurs, the contract gets automatically executed. For example, let's say if a coffee curing unit has received uh, a bag of coffee from so and so grower, an, an automatic ex uh, payment transfer gets initiated because of the contract in place. So, diagram below it kind of helps you understand what the uh, uh, blockchain is in a very simplified term. Basically, you know, if you look at these four devices, all four have access to the data and the data is shared across the network. So, all of them have a copy of the data and the data is available to everyone. Hence, you know, uh, it makes it more, so much more trustable. If, so, imagine if this was centralized, only one person has it. There's always a scope of the data being uh, changed, uh, the data being muted, uh, data, you know, somebody could go ahead and change that. So that's what, that's the beauty of blockchain. Uh, it makes, it provides a network which is trustable, uh, traceable, and uh, uh, it's something which, you know, uh, a, a node where, you know, where you have multiple players involved can definitely be used and, you know, it can be of a great advantage. So, uh, and I've kind of already touched upon, you know, how blockchain can help uh, in, in this particular aspect in, uh, you know, uh, coffee trade network. But I'm just going to quickly mention it over here. One is, of course, like I said, it improves transparency in the supply chain because now I know exactly how the product has moved, right? So coffee moved from global A to curing unit B to uh, uh, retailer C. So I know exactly how it has moved. And it provides complete traceability, end-to-end -end traceability. So now if a consumer who buys coffee from a retailer uh, and verifies, uh, tries to verify the trace of that particular coffee, he will get a complete history of how the product has moved, which farm it's come from, you know, which unit it has to process this, et cetera. Um, and another important aspect of blockchain is it, it makes it so very easy for now for growers to now get access to finance and insurance, right? Uh, and, and how does it do that? So let's understand this. Now, one, farmers are getting paid on time. Secondly, I know exactly what the quality of the uh, crop is. Thirdly, there's also uh, immediate real-time data of harvesting, immediate real-time data of, you know, type of coffee, the quantity of coffee. Thirdly, um, you know, very importantly, there's also uh like i said yeah because payments have already touched upon so this helps it helps farmers you know get easy access to funds because now data is available about exactly you know what kind of coffee they're making how they're making uh so uh, and you know the quality of the produce as well uh even insurance for example you know in, for insurance providers it becomes very easy because now they exactly know uh, you know, what are the conditions that are prevailing in a particular farm? If there was rain, if there was uh, lack of rain, that can easily be uh, availed on a blockchain network by getting data from the farm directly through the use of IoT devices, which I mentioned earlier, right? You could have simple sensors sitting in the farm, which can capture this data. And now that data can actually help make insurance claims very easy, right? Um, Immediate payments, like, you know, there's a very key element of uh, a network like this is it enables immediate payments when, uh, if, a, if like I already mentioned, if a uh, retailer has received a certain uh, trans a certain load of coffee and immediately that is captured in the blockchain, that, that would trigger, trigger an event because of a contract in place to make a payment directly from the retailer or the queuing to the grower or the FPO, right? Um, now, so this makes it... Uh, Blockchain makes, uh, you know, accessibility to data so very easy. Now, not just for, you know, government or uh, bigger players, even each and every farmer on the node, each and every curing unit on the node now has access to the data, can use it to improve their own services, can take it back and, and you know, make it, make production of coffee or any other produce, you know, more efficient. Um, Fraud detection also, like I said, you know, becomes very important here. Now, uh, there are two kind of two types of fraud that could happen. Right, one is your um, fake seeds and fake pesticides that end up into the as a crop new input, or secondly, uh, fake produce itself. For example, especially in the case of GI products, uh, of coffee that does not belong to Chikmagalur, let's say it seeps in. Right so now, through blockchain, that's easily identifiable. So only the coffee that is on the chain is actually you know genuine if there's something which is not on the chain is not genuine so if somebody tries to verify as a consumer if i try to verify the trace of the coffee if it's not a genuine coffee I'll, it will not show any trace right and also very importantly the crop inputs 
Uh, somebody is saying, can you share the PPT? We'll share the PPT after the presentation. I'll email it out. Uh, so yeah, so like I was saying, even look at the crop inputs, like a lot of fake seeds and fake pesticides. 30% of fake pesticides, 30% uh, of pesticides in India are actually fake, right? So even that can be, if you if you in backward integrate with the pesticides and seed manufacturers, right? So we can also ensure that all the way back to the seeds and pesticides, we can ensure that there are genuine seeds, genuine pesticides coming into the chain and further down the network, genuine coffee is actually what's getting sold, right? A uh, lot of middlemen, of course, you know, whenever there is middlemen, it increases uh, cost, it reduces efficiency. Now, because blockchain is so decentralized, I, you take away all the middlemen because you don't need somebody in between to enable the transaction. Now you can directly uh, transact with, with your uh, buyer, Right, without the use of without the presence of a middleman, because now there's a trustable network in place. Earlier there was lack of trust, and hence you need a middleman now. But now you have a trustable network in place, and then and hence that enables a direct selling and reduces the reliance on middlemen and takes away a lot of this inefficiency that happens. So already men spoke about data and how you know real time data is now available on a blockchain network and it's available to each and every player, and they can respectively use that data and be able to further improve and bring in more efficiencies. So let's specifically look at you know, each and individual aspect more in detail, right? Now, how does uh, blockchain improve transparency, right? For example, if you look at consumers these days, I mean, consumers are looking for uh, products uh, for which they are able to verify the origin. You know, people are looking for so-called organic products because they want to make sure that uh, the produce is actually, you know, healthy. They want to make sure that, you know, the produce is guilt free where, you know, no animals or no, uh, there's, you know, no animals have been harmed, for example. So consumers are looking for products like that and there's a demand for clean food. But current system, you know, if you look at it, it's non-existent or completely prone to fraud, right? I mean, for, like I already said, you can have coffee coming in from some other region or you know we don't know whether the coffee was ethically grown etc so a lot of that is happening and that's the reason there is need for transparency and this is how an a blockchain can improve transparency because now each and every data each and every data point that you know is goes into growing a coffee can be captured and because it's on a blockchain network because it cannot be modified a consumer will trust it, right? But if it were to be on any other network or if it were to be on the data which was database which is controlled by a central authority, there's always a scope of fraud. There's always a scope of the data being changed or manipulated. But in this case, uh, blockchain, by the virtue of the fact that it's immutable, the fact that everybody owns a copy and hence, you know, nobody can make an edit without the consensus of everyone. It ensures that the, any any type of fraud does not happen in the network. And let's look at uh, the tracing of coffee in general, right? Uh, you know, how does blockchain ha help in uh, tracing coffee? Uh, so, you know, basically what happens in a, in a coffee uh, blockchain or rather blockchain network is, like I said, every node is now participating in the network or in the transaction. So like, you know, for example, this is actually the implementation that we did with Coffee Board here. We got all the all the players involved, like for example, the farmer, the consumer, we even had a processing unit, the hulling unit, the roasting unit, the sampling unit as well on the network. And all of them uh, basically ensure that every transaction that was happening was actually done through the network. And also parameters like weight, moisture, uh, the type of coffee and the outturn were captured right at the source, right? So the quality of coffee was known right at the time of picking up from the farmer, right? Uh, even certification data or the grading data was available on the network itself. So anybody could, you know, uh, take a bag of coffee, scan it and figure out, you know, what was a, uh, which farmer it originated from, which curing unit it was processed at and what was the grade of the coffee as well right uh, excuse me and also very important as a consumer it helps uh, us to understand uh, how the coffee as uh, coffee has been grown it helps us to even get you know understand the story behind the coffee and if you talk about marketing these days it's always important to create a story behind what you're selling right so as a consumer, it gives me a story. It tells me which farmer it's originated from, what is the farm location, 
and hence i am able to connect to the coffee so much more better right i'm able to one confidently procure it because i know it actually comes from chikmagalur or bihar hills secondly now i'm able to connect to the farmer who's grown it or even to the supply chain that it has actually come from and that also adds a lot of marketing value to the producer so you know uh, going in little more detail about how the implementation was done and some of you i'm sure you're wondering yes you have a blockchain network but how are things tracked right how do how do we give uh, each and every how, how do how does every transaction that happen uh, is tracked one how do how do we bring how do we digitize coffee right that's a question you might be asking how does a coffee bag get digitized so the way it gets digitized is in the form of a, a unique the label it could be a qr code it could be any kind of 2d code which goes on the bag itself uh, and the label that we used was uh, a non replicable tamper proof label uh, which you know ensured that uh, you know one there was no fraud happening where people were taking label from one bag and putting it on another because it was tamper evident secondly it was non replicable which means it was it's like think of it as an aadhar for a coffee bag right and so it's a unique identity for a coffee bag which is not coffee bag which is non replicable which is uh, tamper proof so that's how we did it and we used uh, a, a variant of blockchain network called hyperledger there are different variants of blockchain network i'm, I'm sure some of you might be aware you know uh, but just just to keep it simple there are different variants of a blockchain network there is a, a difference in how they've implemented there are for example you know there are networks which are completely publicly available like a ethereum network or for example bitcoin is a form of blockchain network which is publicly available or it could be a network which requires permission for people to participate in right so in this case we used a, a hyperledger network which is a permission based blockchain network so only people who who uh, we wanted to be part of this network were actually part of it it was not a completely publicly available network right so let's understand uh, you know how a coffee blockchain network would work and you know what is a product workflow right so you know you have these this slightly more simplified just to make it easy to understand but let's un uh, assume that these are the various nodes in a coffee supply chain network you have a grower you have a fpo you have a curing unit you have a roasting unit and you have a retailer and then at the end of it you have a consumer and of course you have a certifying authority which could be a coffee board uh, or coffee lab here so at any point of time when a coffee bag is procured by the grower it is digitized to the form of the label which i showed you then it gets into the digital network or the blockchain network so and that is enabled again through a simple mobile application or a mobile phone uh, which great thing of our use case was something which would work even in a poor internet or a no internet connection right so yeah so you know the 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 coffee bag is digitized and it comes into the blockchain network and then every transaction that happens when a grower sends coffee to block uh, to a collective unit the transaction is recorded into the blockchain and when the co collective receives the uh, bag even that time the transaction is recorded and it's uh, recorded as uh, you know collective collective having received the bag from the grower and so on and so forth right so when a collective sends it to curing again a transaction is recorded and going coming back also each and every transaction is recorded also the sampling was completely defined uh, so you know the smart algorithms used to basically help the lab authorities to understand how much sample to procure from each bag and once the samples were procured the even the certificates were now entered into the blockchain so even the sampling procurement part was also transact captured into the blockchain network and even the uh, certification that was issued was also captured in the blockchain network now something which we uh, have not mentioned here but even your payments are part of your blockchain network now that flows again also through your network and any any payments are also recorded completely and it's known at any point of time whether a particular payment has happened or not in addition to that when a consumer receives the item they can now trace get the complete <coughs> excuse me get the complete history of the uh, transaction that happened complete history of the produce they can see exactly which uh, curing unit processed it roastery processed it and also look at the certificate uh, excuse me certificate of the um, uh, of, of the coffee that they are consuming so just a little bit more about uh, what was a blockchain network that we used like i said you know we what we used was a variant of a blockchain network called hyperledger 
this is a permission based network which means only permission <coughs> entities are allowed to be here and you know this but at the end of the day blockchain is something which is a distributed network so it and it, it the underlying characteristics and underlying principles are again still the same uh there was it, it provided ability to track cert certificates photos in even locations which i'll show you in the next slide as well and uh, this is something which is quite well uh, configurable as well so you know the system is well configurable easy to configure when i say easy to configure i don't mean infrastructure i mean you know in terms of you know designing the network in terms of how many nodes and who all can participate in this right so let me just quickly show you uh, a small video of i think this video is not visible unfortunately i think uh, but you know i'm just going to describe the video or i'll try to show it after the presentation but basically it basically uh, it was explaining how easy it is for a farmer like I'm sure you can see the slide, so I'm going to explain it from here itself. So that label on the bag is a label which helps you digitize it, and then uh, uh, there's a there's there's a person scanning this bag and adding it to the blockchain network. Um, it's a quite a very simple process. Um, you just you know, as easy as just scanning or uh, taking a picture, right? And and hand and when that happens, the coffee bag is now digitized and it's part of the network. Um, so this uh, this basically helps you understand how the flow, uh, how the data flows or the network flow is. So you know the, there's a there's a three elements here which we want to understand. There's a physical element wherein you know there's actually farmers, processors, distributors, and there's a digital flow which is done through a mobile application. Right, so mobile application helps you enable the transaction between the various players. And of course, at the bottom of it is a blockchain network which captures all the data, right? So you have, so this is basically the three levels in which uh, you know the the transaction or the system is completely built, and this is a workflow of the system. So, like I was saying, right? You know, you've got a complete history of any transaction. This basically shows you when when any at any point of time, if a particular coffee unit or a bag was verified, right, through the mobile application. It would give you a complete history of and a trace of the transaction. So in this case, you can see that you know it was procured from MPCCW coffee uh, curing unit, and you know went to a roaster. We also see the picture of the uh, I think it's a curing unit or the collective unit. I'm not sure, but yeah, you see the picture. You also see the certificate at the bottom, and also the location uh, of uh, you know, you'll also be able to see the location of each and every uh, transaction that happens. So, like I was saying, we used a specialized label on the network on the back. So, and the, you know, it was the label is something which basically, uh, you know, it's not a it's not a dumb label. Basically, it's an intelligent label which basically ensures that it's non non copyable. There's a lot of elements here in this which are not copyable. Plus, it gives a digital entity uh, to the uh, produce or the copy in this case, right? Uh, plus, like I said, it's something which is not tamper evident. So you know you cannot take it out from one bag and put it out of the bag. So uh, it ensures that you know uh, the sanctity of the blockchain network is maintained. Uh, so this is why we use this label. Particular label was used. Um, and of course, uh, I mean, so of course, you know, I mean, as a network or as anybody who's on the network will get complete access to the data. Complete access to you know how each and every bag is going to the network. Complete access to all the reports, and be able to take back this data and actually make the process much more efficient and improve. Right now, of course, uh, our, the goal is to now uh, enable these reports in local languages as well, so that it's easier for uh, growers or farmers or players to be able to make make sense out of these reports. So, I'm coming back to. Uh, you know what are the various other advantages of blockchain? So first we spoke about, uh, you know, if, if I go back, first we spoke about uh, improving transparency. Then we spoke about tracing coffee, and we took an example of our implementation in tracing coffee. And this is an example of, of our implementation. Now we come back to uh, what are the other advantages that blockchain can bring in, right? So blockchain can help. Uh, farmers get you know access to financial resources right now i'm sure they have limited access to financial resources because lending institutions perceive agriculture industry as risky right 
uh, is highly uh, dependent on the weather. So in a lot of institutions perceive it, uh, industry as risky. And uh, there's no way farmers can prove the ability to repay that. So blockchain helps, uh, provides, uh, you know, ability to farmer to show that, you know, what they've harvested, how much they've harvested. Because that data is now available on the network and it's verifiable, it is genuine, right? So now farmers can take the data back to some of the insurers, or, you know, the finance um, uh, financiers, and you know, be able to uh, get funding for for themselves. Also, this can be used for purchasing crop insurance because now crop insurance, of course, depends on the type of crop. It also depends on the farm quality, etc. So you know, that data can go back to the insurers and help uh, you know farmers procure crop insurance pretty easily. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, this in general can help farmers in, not just you know make everything transparent, but also get make it easy for them to be able to prove uh, or showcase their abilities and um, you know reduce the risk that is existing in the minds of the insurers or the financiers, right? Um, payments, <coughs> payments also become very important. Payments is one of the key elements of you know any network, any transaction, right? If you look at now, a lot of growers have to wait weeks or sometimes even months to you know get paid, even after delivering the harvest, right? But blockchain can take away all that weight and the pain because now every, like I said, transactions are uh, recorded, and any point of time a transaction happens, a payment transaction can also be initiated at the same time automatically through a special contract in place, right? So farmers can get paid immediately without delay, which they can take back and further you know uh, improve their lives or the uh, or their efficiency or the productivity as well, right? So, and then now uh, you added transparency, trust, and uh, um, uh, you know efficiency to the settlements, right? And hence, this can uh, unlock new financial mechanisms, right? Because now, because now financiers and bankers are trusting the farmers and the network, this in itself will in, uh, help uh, improve. Uh, getting finance for the, for producing coffee or the producing vineyard, right? Which which basically translates to more purchasing power. If you look at it this way, currently farmers, you know, they lack ability to conduct due diligence on their buyers. You know, or they don't have an ability to plan harvest sales considering you know market conditions. But through blockchain, which now can capture the transactions, the stock price of goods, and even buyers' information, so it, this will enable uh, farmers to know exactly whom they want to sell, whether the buyer is trustworthy. A kind of a score can be now enabled in a blockchain network, right? If, a, if in, ensuring that uh, grading the buyers as well. So, you know, that can also help uh, farmers get good visibility on who the buyer is and whether, uh, uh, you know, whether they could sell to this buyer or not. And very importantly, uh, because information is available, you know, farmers are now able to procure the right price for their produce, right? Uh, they're also able to determine what the harvest is currently worth, right? And sell it at a price that reflects the global market conditions. So now, because of data, because of the fact that data is trustable and so much of uh, data is now available in the network, now this indirectly helps a farmer because they get the right price for their produce. Um, so this is, you know, my last slide. Uh, and I think we're almost at the end of our time as well. So I'm sure you might be having questions about, you know, where has blockchain been implemented and, um, you know, uh, what are the various other examples of this implementation? So, you know, there is uh, a company called Rackshare in Africa, which has actually made an implementation for some of the growers there. Uh, there's an implementation for wheat farmers, which has happened in Australia, which basically there was a huge settlement issues that were happening in that region and you know because of this uh, agri digital network you know that has been considerably reduced a lot of big enterprises like ibm walmart alibaba are actually uh, you know uh, going to leverage blockchain for all the produce that comes into their retail chains uh, starbucks which is a very big coffee chain um, is also actually uh, we're working with microsoft to enable uh, blockchain based coffee procurement as well right uh, and just to, just to close on, you know, what have we done in terms of the implementation? We've already implemented a POC with the coffee board. We've done field trial and BRLs. Uh, we've also done field trials in Chikmaglu now. And, you know, um, uh, we of course, also done it for pepper. We're going to expand it to other organic and GI products. Uh, another important aspect we're adding is going to be a, a marketplace wherein, uh, you know, not just the supply chain, but even provide a way 
for the people who are participating in the supply chain to be able to transact and you know sell to the consumers right or even other players in the network so even adding a marketplace uh, to the platform uh, please do look forward to that um, so yeah these are my coordinates uh, and you know basically uh, the idea is to be able to provide a transparent and a trustable supply chain network um, and you know ensuring that you know uh, fraud is uh, fraud is basically not present uh, and there's no scope for any kind of fraud or pilfering happening so that's the goal of uh, actress technologies uh, so yeah we can probably take uh, questions now uh, viber if i can stop sharing my screen yes yes thank you so much because it was a good presentation in fact uh, it is pretty much in the ratio of your work wonderful work which you have done and uh, the session is open for questions uh, uh, there is a question in the screen you can listen can, uh, can, can i go ahead it. can i go ahead yeah go ahead yeah my name is chidambar joshi i have one question actually I, i fairly understood this blockchain model but is there any scope of uh, coffee based value added products also getting into this uh come again please coffee coffee uh, based value added products actually like a health products and all where the coffee in ingredient that kind of uh, business actually those yes, so ah. if you look at it the technology is agnostic to uh, the the kind of produce or the product that goes on to the network right so if there is coffee is an ingredient to some other network that basically gets extended now so the end product would have a complete trace of you know what are the various ingredients has gone into that product including the coffee so yes definitely you know it this can be further extended to enable any other product for which coffee is an ingredient great thank you very much no uh, just for the understanding of the people uh, this is a, a digital storyteller of the entire um, walk of your product so yeah. uh, whichever product which you put in uh, if you are able to try uh, start from the source you will be able to tell the story of it it's a digital sto storytelling of your product basically and just to add to what vive have said it's a verifiable trustable digital storyteller right so there's no um, uh, confusion or doubts in the minds of the buyer that you know what the story is being told is a genuine story or not very true very true uh, there's a question in the chat uh, mr benjamin is asking can blockchain be also used to verify the quality of the coffee seed and what more technologies can be needed to uh, allow this I think Great. Uh, related yeah. to the previous answer which we have given. Correct, correct. And just to add to it, yeah, in terms of what else is needed, yeah, I mean, see, for example, if you want to capture, you know, the moisture content of the coffee or uh, you know various outcome, yes, there would be some additional devices which would be needed. For example, some simple sensors, IoT devices, one uh, which would capture this, and hence that can uh, help you further derive at the coffee quality. Um, but does it does the network itself uh, remove the need for a uh, 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 you know coffee tasting that happens correctly the way the coffee is graded uh, probably not but yes what can happen is the result of the grading goes on the network itself and uh, is, which makes it you know now the coffee the grading that has been provided is now trustable and uh, verifiable uh, i hope i answered your question benjamin no uh Uh, I think uh, you have answered the request. Uh, next uh, question, uh, Mr. C K Gopal wants your contact details. If you could, could you be able to repeat? Yeah, sure. Uh, Or you just share the screen now. But, uh, I'll share my screen. Yeah. Uh, the next question is from Mr. Jagadi Sunkar. Uh, for all the people who knows this technology in and out, he's asking uh, uh, how many farmers of us are, are there on such a system currently? Uh, like i said I, like i gave you an example uh, you know we seeing uh, uh, currently there is no large scale implementations in any of the countries but there are a lot of uh, smaller implementations that are happen for example the wheat farmers in agri digital and i will encourage you to go back and you know do uh, look for these reports and w vaccine in africa so i mean i don't have the exact numbers but uh, and of course you know uh, if you look at uh, the the coffee import implementation that we've done we've got a considerable number of farmers as well on the chain so uh, not a large scale implementation uh, hasn't happened yet but i've mean, seen a lot of isolated uh, small scale implementations that have happened and we've seen some great results uh, from these 
but if you if you feel help me understand the uh, what you are alluding to I mean, are you very trying to understand if these have been implemented or has been successful if that was your follow up question and maybe i can take that up as well yeah generally i mean do i know on blockchain one of the yeah. uh, issues uh, that i have come across is real use cases have not come about Why? No, I agree with that. Yes, yes. Ah. So no, basically, I... what is going? Okay, it's a very difficult proposition for other commodities, but it is going to be the next breath in coffee because critically, it is the market which demands it. Because seventy yeah. percent of uh, Indian coffee is actually exported, and the two two countries which value premium and the qualities which uh, which Indian coffee provides in terms of sustainability or in terms of other aspects, which provide a premium. So there is an incentive and demand. uh in both ways so uh, and in coffee as such it has been implemented by large industries like the nestle and nespresso ibm which has uh, also they have used the ibm uh, hyperledger so in that way uh, in the in terms of procurement it has already started uh, and it is probably it is going to matter a lot at uh, large scale implementation of this will lead to minimization of uh, Indian Correct. coffee because there is a story to tell about Indian coffee. No, no absolutely, and I think when it comes to exporting any commodity out of India, I think you know being able to uh, provide certificates, certification, provide the trace also becomes very important now, uh, and that becomes a great story, a selling story as well to all the importers of other countries. Hello. Uh, Mr. Benjamin, could you uh, open your mic and state your question because I'm not able to follow you. Mr. Benjamin. Yeah. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Go. Yeah. So I just wanted to check on this whether uh, when you're talking about the data being available for the entire network uh, in the blockchain. uh is there some way that this can be limited that only the select parties can view it or does everyone in the blockchain has access to the data yeah so i mean there are various uh, flavors of blockchain uh if it's a public blockchain it can always you know it could be publicly available but you can have various implementation of blockchain where a part of data is only available between two nodes and uh, other part of data is available even to the general network this is very much possible in the hyperledger uh, blockchain example which i was giving you so yes the, uh, there is the possibility where you can have data available only between two players and uh, um, other other larger data available to the complete network short sure. okay thank you i have one question uh, i'm yeah. smallly menon and uh, this is with regard to the quality uh, you have stated that there will be a certificate issued by the coffee board right. uh, i just wanted to know who draws the sample at the curing works to send it to the coffee board for analysis and secondly if there is a quality complaint now who is responsible for that okay uh, so first question currently in the implementation uh, the coffee lab uh staff is actually drawing the samples uh from the curing unit uh, and that is done based on the quantity that is procured from a particular for particular farmer and based on that we arrive at how much each uh, how much sample has to be drawn from each plant one the second question was about uh if there is a uh, issue with the quality okay who is going to be responsible for that so uh, so let's look at this way so the fact that uh one you can go back to the blockchain network and now exactly trace uh, to the point where things went wrong for example right uh, and secondly uh, in a network like this an issue gets caught even before you know uh, or rather for example a coffee of poor quality would be you know immediately uh, figured out even before it gets sold to the market because the coffee uh, the way the network is built once the sample is drawn and the sample quality is not great we would be able to trace back each and every bag you know uh, which from which the sample was drawn and be able to isolate them so even so that's another advantage of blockchain network now you are able to trace back each and every bag even if it goes to the market so that's another advantage and that can help you prevent use case uh, such cases where you have a poor quality coffee in the market and you are trying to figure out what exactly went wrong 
I'm looking at it in a slightly different concept. Uh, yeah, you see, the yeah. thing is, when you draw a sample from a bag, I fully endorse what you say and appreciate what you say, that a poor quality bag can be easily identifiable. But sometimes right. what right. happens is it's not that the quality is bad, but it's just that it's not properly bulked and bagged. So what okay. happens is you may have 20% of the bags having some very good quality and the balance not having very good quality. So, okay. you know, you have to have some sort of a parameter with regard to the sampling procedure itself. Perhaps you have initiated, I'm not very sure. But the point is, if I have 20 bags which are of good quality and I have drawn the coffee, say, from 30% of the bags, there is every possibility of the quality not being completely representative of the lot in question. Right. right? Yes. Then it becomes very difficult for you to say that, you know, so and so is responsible for it. So that is yes. just a point of an observation. I mean, I leave it to you. Yes. I'm sure you have a solution to it. But this is one aspect where we are having a lot of issues in the market. I mean, okay. I'm talking uh, from the export angle. We do have this sort of a problem where, uh, you know, all the bags don't represent the entire quality of that particular lot. So I was just wondering whether blockchain can, you know, see how best this could be tackled. Probably have already taken necessary action on that because your certification is entirely based on what has been drawn from the bag. So it's Absolutely. just a point of observation. Definitely. Thank you so much. And just to give it's a wonderful uh, observation, ma'am. Uh, yeah. I think it is uh, more of a, more than the blockchain problem. It's the sampling issue, as you mentioned. Yes. There is a uh, because the aspect of uh, uh, a sample drawing okay, that, that has to be uh, okay, uh, improvised uh, as you yeah. as you said uh, can uh, okay, blockchain can uh, take up as much as data as possible yes. in the sense yes. uh, so two such samples or the kind of samples drawn in the market kind of, you know, tested in a in the two different labs Sim similar kind of uh, kind of as you said there is improvisation required in terms of sampling uh, that's a very yeah. good way identify yeah, why, why I said this was you know, I think IBM has, uh, you're talking about uh, the blockchain. IBM has come up with a very nice blockchain called Farmer Connect. Right. Now, this Farmer right. Connect is for uh, Central, Afri Central America, and they're coming into Africa also. They're doing it. And this right. Farmer Connect, I think it will be a great idea. I'm sure you've already looked into it. I'm not very sure. But take a look at the Farmer Connect. They have been trying to plug all these loopholes in terms of sampling, etc. So maybe we could take a leaf or two from that. Yeah, sure, sure. And just to add to that, in the current implementation that we did with Coffee Board, samples were drawn from you know each and every bag, and uh, there was uh, there was a lot of logic put into place to you know arrive at you know how much sample has to be drawn. Uh, and I understand that's a sampling is a painful process, but you know, the way we implemented it, we have simplified it, and, and I'll be happy to share that video as well for you to understand how we did that. That'll be good because I think, you know, we could have these issues, uh, you know, and later on we shouldn't sort of face the thing that the blockchain in India didn't didn't take care of the quality of the product and it's just, you know, non uh certificate Maybe. put on the bags. It's just an observation. Please don't take it amiss. It's just that uh, this was an observation. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I think, uh, Vikas, uh, do you have the uh, data of, in terms of the uh, the premium uh, that the Adavi back uh, for customers, uh, sorry, the farmers got uh, after the implementation of the uh, blockchain? Do you have any data uh, on that? Uh, no, right now, what? So we are waiting for one process to complete and hence we wanted to share the data after that. Uh, for the for the benefit of the audience, I'll be happy to share a slide on that later. Uh, because we wanted to also ensure the lab processes, sampling process, like what uh, Mr. Shalini was saying. Uh, so wanted to capture that data as well. So I can share it with you later, and if you could forward it to the yeah. participants. Yeah, definitely. In fact, Shalini Manan is actually a legend uh, in the sector of coffee. Okay, coffee, uh, okay, great. Uh, she's uh, the point which she said was uh, very truly mentioned, and uh, the can, the way you have, uh, the, the next steps you have taken to you know, co uh, co you know, collaborate with other uh, you know, kind of incubators and entrepreneurs of uh, coffee board like mr jay kumar and other people probably will yeah, yeah. bring in more number of people uh, acting in uh, cohesions uh, to bring yeah. in the people on ground to uh, make the sampling much better and tell the story right. more, um, in a more validated manner but uh, the point she has made is uh, truly uh, to be taken on board
Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us with us. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. You have, uh, I think, enlightened the audience about the uh, the uh, need of the R, uh, the technology which is going to be the uh, which is going to be uh, you know, take the uh, which will take the coffee sector to the next level. Uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining in. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I don't need business stuff.